So with the release of Wu Assassins on Netflix, we now have a large variety of projects that Eco Oasis himself has starred in or heavily featured in. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through and rank all of them from worst to first. Two things to cover before we jump into the ranking. For one, I apologize for the lighting and setup in this video. I know it's very rudimentary, but I had to kind of work around some things here to record this video. And also for the second thing, obviously this is a very random ranking video. I'm gonna be ranking all of Eco Oasis projects. Why am I doing this? Well, for one, I love Eco Oasis. I think he's one of my favorite actors. He's just, he's so brilliant to watch. Not only do I think he's a tremendous actor, but also I just think he is so entertaining to watch purely due to his martial arts skill. He is unlike any other actor we have out there. And I feel like also because of the release of Wu Assassins, which is a show, if you saw my review, you'll know I adore that show. I think it's just, it's so brilliant. It's so me, like it's so made for me, but I just, I adored Wu Assassins and I just want to talk more about Eco Oasis. So I want to rank all of his things in this video so there will be a couple of exclusions uh, which you'll be able to figure out along the way uh, but for the most part this is going to be everything that eco has pretty much uh, starred in or heavily featured in both in films and tv so let's start off with the bottom coming in at number eight we have beyond skyline now beyond skyline was a movie that I knew it was going to be terrible going into it. I just knew that this movie just wasn't going to be good. And I was kind of hoping that it would maybe be fun, like almost so dumb it was good. But for the most part, I kind of found Beyond Skyline kind of boring. I think that this movie is, you know, it's about a big alien invasion. It's a sequel to a movie called Skyline, which I didn't even know existed. Uh, but this movie actually stars Frank Grillo and you have Eco Oasis in a supporting role. This movie is just honestly kind of boring until you get to the third act. The third act is kind of dumb fun, I will admit. I started to have fun with the movie in the third act, and pretty much as soon as Eco was introduced into the film, that was when I kind of got a lot more interested. But the first half of the movie really tries to go for a bit of a survival horror vibe, which would have been cool, and I liked that idea, but in execution, it was just incredibly boring because of how boring the set design was, how uninterested in the characters I was, how terrible the dialogue was. I just didn't care about any of it, so I didn't really care if any of these characters died but when you move into the third act of the movie and it becomes this big action martial arts sci-fi movie it does become almost so bad it was good so i feel like beyond skyline well it does have some decent things like eco is really good in the movie i really enjoy his performance also mad dog from the raids in this movie which is really cool um and also, I really like the practicality of the aliens, even though they look kind of terrible. Um, it's kind of lovable in that way. Uh, the movie itself, I feel like for the most part, is kind of boring. And that's a real shame. It had a lot of potential to be a really dumb movie, but it was just kind of dull. Coming in at number seven, we have Mile 22. Now, this movie, I was really excited about going into it because it was directed by Peter Berg and stars Mark Wahlberg. Now, that is a combination that I think produces a lot of good projects. We, of course, have Lone Survivor, Deepwater Horizon, and Patriot's Day. This was their fourth collaboration, and that, for me, was incredibly exciting. Throw in the fact that Eco Oasis was going to be in this movie. That got me incredibly excited. Now, this film, I actually don't hate it like a lot of people do. I feel like this movie does get quite a lot of hate and it's completely justifiable i cannot defend this movie it's not good it's terribly shot it's horribly edited for no reason and i feel like all the editing is what really lets this movie down because this movie has the style of editing that is incredibly quick cut you can't see the action in this movie and normally the reason why movies do that is because it wants to hide poor stunt work but why would this movie be hiding poor stunt work when you have eco waste doing all the stunt work it makes no sense to me so i feel like it was just a terrible editing choice on that regard but this movie i do actually have fun with it i'm not gonna lie i own it on blu-ray i think it's a fun time i don't think it's a great movie it's certainly not a good movie in any kind of sense of the word but it's definitely entertaining nonetheless and you know eco is really cool in it so if that's not anything then at least you have that now we have a massive jump in quality to number six, which is Triple Threat. Triple Threat is a Netflix movie that I was really looking forward to. Oh, sorry, no, it's not a Netflix movie. It's just, it's on Netflix here in the UK. But it's a very, very fantastically fun film. This is essentially the Avengers for all your martial art actors. Not only do you have Eco Oasis, but you have Tony Jaa, Michael Jai White, Scott Adkins. You have all of the best kind of martial arts actors from across the world in this one movie. It, like the word to describe it is it is the Avengers for martial arts actors. It's so entertaining to watch. The action is incredible, especially because you have all these professional martial artists just going at it with each other. All of their different styles of fighting just clashing on screen, and especially someone like Scott Adkins, who I'd actually never seen in a movie before 
for seeing him. He's a real hidden gem in this movie. And then I actually went to go on to find out he has done so many other things. But seeing him in this movie, like, they kind of hide him for a while. Like, he kind of doesn't get to show off his skills. And then in the final act, when he gets to actually unleash, he is badass in this movie. And uh, so is everyone. Tony Jaa is, of course, incredible in this. Michael Jai White and his brilliant legs are amazing in this movie. And Eco is, of course, bringing the power, as he always does. This movie is not particularly great either from a story perspective, from, you know, a script perspective. But the movie is a hell of a lot of fun. I had a blast. It's only an hour and a half. It flies by. And I feel like if you enjoy martial arts movies, you need to watch Triple Threat because it's just, it's the perfect combination of all your favorite martial arts actors in an hour and a half. And it's a brilliant time. Coming in at number five, we have Headshot. Now, Headshot is a uh, Indonesian martial arts movie with Eco Waste. This is where we start to get into the Indonesian movies of his career. Now, Headshot, I think, out of all of Eco's kind of main Indonesian movies, is the weakest one of the group. Only because I feel like the story of this one isn't quite as strong as the other three. I feel like that this movie, it has a love story to it, which is actually pretty good in comparison to a lot of action movies. Uh, but it does definitely have some little elements that only slightly pull it back from time to time but still the action in this movie is top notch you can't disagree with that it's just such a fun movie to watch and also the story behind Eco's character in this is very very intriguing and I actually really love that the element that they bring into the movie later on that you find out about his backstory where he came from the group that he came from it's actually really interesting and adds quite a lot of depth to not only his character but also the world that this movie establishes and I really enjoyed that about Headshot I think that this movie has a lot going for it and like I say while I do feel it's the weakest of his Indonesian movies it's definitely a strong one nonetheless and I had a great time watching it. In at number four, we have The Night Comes For Us. And The Night Comes For Us is a movie that I had a great time with. This is a Netflix exclusive movie. And this one is definitely one that you can just go and check out right away. Make sure you do that after watching this video because it's just a great time. This movie stars Joe Taslam. And this film is very, very entertaining on the whole. Because again, this is the exact same guys who did The Raid. And you really get to see all of that translated into here. And what's awesome is obviously this is an eco waste based video. Because I'm an eco waste fanboy. Uh, eco plays the villain in this movie and that's a lot of fun you don't really typically get to see eco play the villain in movies but this was definitely an interesting twist for him he looks brilliant in this movie his suits that he wears his hair it's just it's so on point and he's brilliant and intimidating as the villain especially when you get to the final fight of this movie between joe taslam and eco Oase. it's just electric to watch and all the fight scenes are like that joe taslam absolutely steals the show in this movie and again the story of this is really great it's a really interesting story that you just get lost in and you want to follow the characters and you love the characters characters and it's just a really great way of bringing you into this world and again you know as i said this is an eco waste based video this might be one of my favorite roles from him just because it's something so different than what we're typically used to coming in at number three we have woo assassins now yes this is a bit of a weird one obviously this is a tv show the rest of the things are movies but Wu Assassins is just something special. I'm just a chef. If you have not seen Wu Assassins, please do yourself a favor and go and watch it. It's on Netflix now. You can go check it out at any point because it's just, it's such a great show. And I love the cast of this, of this show. Like everyone is so passionate about it. Everyone just is full of love for the show. And for me, Wu Assassins is a very biased thing because I do absolutely adore the show for what it is. I don't, I do recognize that Wu Assassins is not the best show out there, but I love it for everything that it does. I love all the characters in the show. All the characters are just lovable and likable and you want to support them all. Even the villains are super likable and it's just, you love every single one of them. You get attached to them so quickly. You want to just grow with them and watch them proceed through the show and you just love everything about it. Mix that with the action, which again, you have Eco Oase in the lead role, just stealing the show, but it's not just him, it's everyone else in the show. Everyone in the show can fight, and it's so entertaining to watch, whether you're talking about Lucian Lee or uh, Louis Tan, just everyone kicks ass in this show, and that is exactly what you want in a show like this. Add in the elemental elements into the show, the fire and the water, the earth, wood, metal, all those elements just add so much to the show and add a bit more substance to it to make it so much more interesting. You have Byron Mann in the show, incredible. I just, I love everything about Wu Assassins. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on Wu Assassins, make sure you check out my review on the channel as well. But that is why it lands at number three. Coming in at number two, we have The Raid. Now, The Raid is really what put Eco Oase on the map. The Raid is an Indonesian action movie that is a very short movie. It's kind of, it's only about an hour and 40 minutes, but it is an absolute blast. This film takes the concept of being in a building at the bottom and having to get to the top by just fighting your way through it. And it is insane. 
this movie kind of inspired dread and i think you can see that if you watch the raid it's just it's so interesting because you get to see it's such a simple concept but one that works so well especially for a movie like this especially when you're with an actor like eco waste who can just kick ass regardless you can watch him just go from level to level to level in this movie getting more intense getting more violent and it's so much fun like the raid is just fun it's a fun action movie with incredible martial arts action and if, again if you want to get a real good taster of eco waste if you want to get a really good Good taster of what his movies are like watch the raid because it's just unlike anything else gareth evans is an absolute master with the camera in this i can't wait to see what his next project is rumor is he's doing a deathstroke movie for dc if that's the case i couldn't imagine anything better because the raid perfectly exemplifies why gareth evans and eco Oasis are just a dream team and i cannot wait to see where they go next and finally in a number one we have the raid 2 now the raid i I think the Raid and the Raid 2 are honestly pretty much on par with each other. But I put the Raid 2 slightly above the Raid just because I feel like the story really steps up in the Raid 2. The Raid 1 has a very simple story. It's a very basic story that basically is there simply to serve as a plot function to get Eco into the action. The Raid 2 actually has a lot more of a story to it. And that is what is really interesting about it. Not only is the action absolutely phenomenal as you would expect as it was in the first film but the story is super engaging in this you really get to add a lot more to uh, the character of rama in this movie you really get to see a lot more to him and also just all the other characters who are in this like mad dog coming into it is brilliant in this i love his character all the characters are like that in this show or in this movie and you really get to see all the characters just all in their depth and i really love that and the story it just takes a step up which the first raid didn't have and i feel like that with that particular story element and with that extra writing it just adds a bit more kind of it just adds a bit more substance to the raid as a movie than the first one did and i think that that is why the raid 2 is my favorite eco waste project it's just it's such an experience it is quite a long movie it is two and a half hours but kind of like all of his projects they just fly by because of how entertaining they are and the raid 2 for me is by far the best eco waste project that we have thus far so there you have it there's my ranking of all of eco oasis projects from the worst to the first if you have your ranking make sure you leave it in the comment section down below maybe you've seen a couple projects from him that i haven't seen i know i haven't seen his first movie and also i didn't include stuber in this list just because why would i include stuba but if you have your own list make sure you leave it in the comment section down below and as always guys if you see more movie reviews and movie related videos like this be sure to subscribe and hope to see you guys again next time